Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dahlia from Mendeley Cards and More. I was asked to make a tutorial of this Galaxy card that I introduced on a project share a couple of weeks ago. And although I added it to the quick and easy um, group, it looks like it can be a little intense, but trust me, it is very, very simple. So if you are interested in finding out how to make this card, Please stick around and continue watching. So here's the stamp set that I'm using. It's the Monster Space stamp set that I bought from AliExpress quite some time ago. And I'll be using the monster, the spaceship, the shooting star, the rocket, and what looks like Saturn, and a little present. And I'm gonna take those stamps and uh, put them in my Tonic Studios uh, stamping platform using a spare piece of Nina solo white cardstock of 110 pounds. I'm laying down the stamps in no particular order and I'm gonna use Memento to Seed of Black ink to um, ink those images onto the white paper. This ink is alcohol marker friendly, will not bleed. And as you can see, I am re-stamping um, quite a few times because I didn't get a clear impression. And then I noticed that my present was a little too close to the magnet in the corner, so I had to move it and reset. Now I am by no means a professional when it comes to alcohol uh, marker coloring. These images are fairly small so I mainly stood with um, two shades of color, one for shadowing and one um, the actual color that I wanted it to be. So here I'm using a yellow orange and then uh, using the yellow for the tail of the shooting star and the star itself. And I'm just fast forwarding, because again, I did nothing spectacular here. These images, like I said, were very small. So I'm finishing up my rocket ship here, and I actually purchased the coordinating dies for this set. So I'm gonna lay them over the perspective images and using a little washi tape to hold them in place because the last thing you want when you're running it through your machine is for them to shift. Um, so once I finish that, I will run it through my cuddle bug and then we'll pick up from there. So this is my last image that I am putting the dye around. Um, yep, just finishing up and here we are out of the machine. And I'm going to peel these apart carefully because they are small and you don't want your image to tear. And once I pull all of these out, I'm just gonna push them to the side and then we will begin with our background. So using another piece of Nina Solo White cardstock, I pulled out my Distress inks um, from Tim Holtz. And the colors that I used were uh, Stormy Sky Faded Jeans, Seedless Preserves, and uh, Black ink. And using my sponger, I am, well not sponger, but blender, um, am applying the ink with the lightest color first, very softly. Um, the last thing you want to do is have some harsh edges and too much ink. It's better to build up than take away. Next I go in with faded jeans, which you can see is significantly darker. I'm working all along the edges and then lightly going into the center because I didn't want the center to be too dark. That is where the spaceship is gonna um, sit and I wanted it to be slightly brighter than the edges. Next, I'm gonna go in with the seedless preserves and this is just gonna give it a little break in that blue tone. Um, not too much, as you can see, I'm going very gingerly. And then again, I am going to go across the center just to break up that blue. Next, I'm gonna go in with the black ink. Now, I had a little cube in my stash for quite some time. Oh, but first I wanna go in with the faded jeans again just to tone down that, that sealess preserves just a little bit. So I had this cube in my stash for quite some time. And after trying to ink the blender for a little bit, I can see that I think the cube has reached the end of his life. So I reach over and grab my Craftsman black ink. This is just standard ink. And you can see the difference. 
right there. So yeah, any minute now, I'm gonna grab that cube and toss it to the side. It is going in the garbage. So I'm applying that black along the edges because I did want the edges of the image to be darker and then lightly going in the middle just to tie it all in. All right, so that's the background. Doesn't look like much right now, but you'll see in a minute how, um, how it's gonna turn out. So this is Distress inks and they are reactive inks. They react with any kind of liquid or water. So you see me taking a very small fine brush and just uh, flicking water along the image. I took a terry cloth um, rag and then just pulled up the excess water and that's the effect that we have. But I wanted more. So I grabbed this star background that I had and we're gonna run that through the machine, making sure it's center because I wanted it all even. And this is the effect that we get. Simply beautiful, little stars in the midst of all that. So that's our background. We're done with that. So I'm grabbing the little slider uh, die and I'm just taking my elements and just laying them around just to get an, an idea of what I want it to look like. See if I can get a balance uh, with images um, on both sides and still not take away from the ship being the focal point. So you can see I'm just moving them around. That's the hardest part for me, trying to um, decide on something. But I finally decided I'm gonna put that ship in the middle and I think I can work with that placement. So I'm going to take another little piece of washi tape and I'm gonna secure that right before I run it through the machine. Yep, made up my mind. So we're gonna cut that piece out and you will see what the end result looks like. Now, the first time I did this card, I didn't keep the piece that I had cut out, which is why that white streak is um, showing on the first card. And in hindsight, I felt that I should have kept it once I already had built everything together just to give it a seamless look. So this time around, I'm keeping that little piece. Um, so I took an extra pair, uh, extra piece of cardstock and just um, inked that up in black and cut out a little circle. And that's where my ship is going to be mounted and be able to slide behind the card. So I'm double checking my card because it's been a minute since I did it. And sometimes when you're in that creative headspace, you just do it. And then when you go to create it, you'd be like, how did I do that? So I'm adding some foam uh, squares um, just to keep the ship up off the card itself. And I just double checking to make sure that I placed them correctly and I had to reship just a little because it was snagging. Remove the strips and then we're going to place that ship on top. I did decide to add just a little bit of wet glue because this element is going to be touched and moved and I didn't want it to come apart from the foam strips. So I get a little anxious, then let the glue dry. I had to go back and put a little more because I wanted to make sure it worked. So I'm going to give that a little opportunity and then we should be good to go. So now I grabbed a um, four and a quarter by five and a half sheet of paper, um, Nina Sola again, just to be, have that piece actually mounted onto. And what you're going to see me do here is grab a pencil and I'm going to mark the ends where that first piece that I cut out needs to be mounted. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to glue that down. Once that's down, everything will go extremely quick. This is when the, the fun part happens. So I'm double checking to make sure I have that one eighth border all the way around and everything looks good. So I'm gonna glue the back. And of course, in crafting, there's always errors. So I went a little too close to where that ship is gonna glide. And when I mounted my piece with my ship, Upon pressing on it, 
I realized that some of that glue got a little too close to the edge. And when I double checked to make sure that my ship was still gliding, is when I realized I went a little too close. Yeah, this is the reality. So I had to go and grab my little pick, pick that up, make sure that all the glue was removed, everything was working, and I managed to save the day after all that. So now I'm just gonna add some foam um, pop-up dots behind all the other elements, and I'm gonna start laying that down, keeping in mind where I wanted my sentiment um, to be. And of course, on this card, I wanted it to be on the bottom. And I'm triple checking, make sure everything is good and it didn't re-glue itself. So I stamped my sentiment, hope your birthday is out of this world and the spare cardstock, and I'm just trimming it down, giving it a nice little border, top, bottom, and sides. And then I'm gonna grab my scissors and fishtail the end. Now this is a simple technique. Go down the middle and then just from corner into the middle and you get a little fishtail. Pop that up on some foam dots, and then I'm going to add it onto my card. And I opted for the bottom right corner this time around, uh, considering that I did the left corner the first time, I wanted it to be different. So I'm getting those release backings off, and then we're going to add them onto the card. I'm gonna add the last of my little um, elements onto the card. And this is where I have to make up my mind and make sure that where I want it is where it's gonna stay. And that was the last element that I didn't know where I wanted it to be. So here we go, we're gonna chuck it one more time, make sure it's still moving freely. And then now I mounted that onto um, top folding card still following on that Nina Solo White and this is where I decided to add um, some stars silver stars that I had in my um, stash so I'm gonna add those in and then I also decided to add some googly eyes to the monster like I did on the first one I thought that this card would be cute for a child um, a little boy in particular and um, I have always found it look better when you add your, whether it's sequins or beads or uh, flat back pearls to be in odd numbers. Um, so this is what I'm doing. Um, I noticed that these stars stuck together. So I thought I grabbed one when I went to glue it down. I ended up having a few, so I pushed them off to the side. Here I'm adding the googly eyes, and that is actually the finishing touches to the card. I hope you found this tutorial informative and inspirational. As you can see, it came together uh, very easy and very quickly. Here are some close-ups of the first card that I made. And here are some pictures of the second one. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.